So look at me waving my arm here. And you see it's transferring energy from my arm to that rope. And that signal you see traveling from left to right is basically a wave. I'm creating energy, and that energy transfers into a wave in that rope. The more energy I put, the higher goes my arm, the more energy is in the wave. Notice that I do it only once at a time. And the reason why is because if I do it often like this, see what happens. The energy bounces at the back, back into my rope. And that is something a phenomenon will have to work with with Wi-Fi, which is called reflection, and that derives in another thing, which is called multipath. We'll come back on that. In radio waves, of course, you're not waving a rope, but you have an antenna. And in the antenna, because you use alternative currents, the electricity of the current goes up and then goes down, and then goes up and goes down every halfway of the cycle. And what happens is that that energy traveling through the antenna radiates an electric energy out, which is an electric field, something that doesn't shock you, but it's an electric field that travels out. And that electric field is the energy we're talking about. So depending on where you are in your cycle, the energy will be positive or neutral or negative or neutral or positive, etc. And this is the electric wave we are working with with Wi-Fi. So to work with Wi-Fi, you need to understand waves a little bit. And you need to be able to describe them to understand how much energy they carry, to understand what characteristic these waves have. One way to describe the wave is to talk about its size, its energy, and this is called the amplitude. The amplitude is the measure of the size of the wave, the amount of energy it carries. It is measured from the bottom to the top. You will see some other measurements where they take a reference at the middle, which is the neutral point, and they show the difference between that neutral point and the top or the bottom. It doesn't matter. You can use one system or the other as long as you understand that the energy of the wave, the amount of energy, is that amplitude. But please understand, the amplitude doesn't make that the wave is higher in an electric field. The size of the wave is entirely going to be dependent on your antenna and the electricity that goes through it. More energy is not going to result in a higher or bigger wave. But it's a nice way to represent it. And a way to understand that analogy is to take another example. Imagine that you want to represent that guy playing sound. And this guy is playing sound softly. So you may be representing the notes coming out of the speakers like small notes, like this one, tiny notes. But imagine that you want to represent the sound being louder. How are you going to represent that? Well, the best way is to just represent bigger notes like this. But of course, you know, the notes themselves are not bigger, right? It's just a concept. It's just a way to represent that the sound is higher. So for my amplitude, it's the same logic. My wave doesn't really change. It doesn't become higher. But we use that representation to show that there is more energy in that wave. So the higher the amplitude, the more energy we want to represent in that wave. So amplitude is one thing. Another characteristic is to talk about time. If you talk about time, you may want to sit at the point and then measure at that point how the wave is passing near you. And of course, the wave is an electrical field, so it's traveling at the speed of light, right? It's just light. So it travels always at the speed of light. But depending on the wave and the shape of the wave and the size of that wave, you may be seeing several times that wave per second, or many, many times per second. And that's the measurement of how frequently you see that wave. So that's the frequency. The frequency is how often over an arbitrary measure, which is one second, how often over one second do you see that wave. And when we talk about the wave, of course, we talk about an entire cycle going up and down and going back up. You can take any reference point you know, to start your measurement. As long as you take that point as a reference, you count one second, and you see how many cycles you saw at that point over that second. That's frequency. And again, the measurement is Hertz from the name of the gentleman who found that concept. So in that example, you see the wave going up, going down, going back up, down again, and back up again. I have two cycles over a measurement of time of one second at any given point in space. 
therefore my wave is seen as being a 2 hertz, 2 cycles per second. Then of course there is kilohertz, thousands of cycles per second, megahertz, millions of cycles per second, gigahertz, billions of cycles per second. In Wi-Fi, we'll be working most of the time at the gigahertz scale, billions of times we will see a wave per second. So that's measuring the amplitude for the energy, then how many times you see that wave passing, again, at the speed of light, right, at any given point. But you can also look at that cycle and measure it in space. So imag imagine you take that wave and you freeze the picture. You don't think about time anymore. And you see that wave like you saw my rope and you froze the image at some point and you want to measure the physical size of one cycle. This is called the wavelength. How long that cycle is, how long that wave is in space, that's the wavelength. That's another concept you need to understand. But you also need to understand that there is a direct relationship between the wavelength and the frequency. Because if the length of the wave is long, because the wave is always traveling at the same speed, which is the speed of light, if that wave is long, well, you'll see less of them per second than if the wave is very short. If the wave is very short, then it's not going to take a long time for that wave to pass. So you'll see more of those per second. So you'll find equations that represent this relationship between c, which is the speed of light, lambda, which is the wavelength, and f, which is the frequency. So you'll see those equations pretty much everywhere. f equals c divided by lambda. You don't need to remember these equations, but you need to remember the relationship between the two. And a nice way to understand it is to take another example. See this big wave at the top of my truck. It's long, so one cycle passing one truck takes some time. So it's a long wavelength. If you look at the race car at the bottom, it's smaller, so it's going to take less time to pass through you. In real life, the truck is going to go slower as well than the race car, but it doesn't matter. Even if they go at the same speed, the truck is going to take longer to pass by you than the shorter engine. Pretty much like this. If you take that one second measurement over that second, you saw the truck three times and you saw the car eight times. So that's what it means. The longer the wavelength, the more time it takes to travel one cycle and therefore the lower frequency it has. So higher frequency means shorter wavelength and vice versa. In Wi-Fi, we'll be working in the gigahertz range. In one of the common frequencies we use, 2.4 gigahertz, a common wave size is about that size, that's 12 centimeters. There is another frequency we work with, which is in the 5 gigahertz range, and because the frequency is higher, then the wavelength is smaller. And that wavelength on average is about something like 5 something centimeters, so smaller. This is important because when you buy equipment, typically the antennas are placed a certain number of wavelengths apart, and you can tell from the distance between the antennas what kind of frequency you're at.